everybody, welcome to another Tallman's Live Colour event. My name is Fiona, I'm the Tallman's Colour Specialist and we are here this evening to talk all things colour. So thank you very much for joining us and if you are joining us for the first time this evening I'll just run through how our session works so that you um, get an understanding. So for the first half an hour I will be in front of the uh, camera if you like talking all things colour products, projects, and certainly here to answer any questions that you do have. So please use this as an opportunity to upload any questions into the feed, and I'll certainly do my best to answer them for you. Um, the next set of um, our, or the next half of how we run our sessions, I should say, um, I will be off the camera, uh, sitting behind the computer to further answer any more questions. And that is an opportunity if you do have any photos that you would like me to have a look at um, areas that you're wanting some assistance with color etc that is your opportunity then to upload them uh, while we're streaming or while I'm in front of the camera it's very hard for you to upload any photos actually it's impossible to do so so hold off until then so as I said we are here tonight to talk all things color uh, certainly here to help you with any projects that you are embarking on and we are here also to talk about our wonderful portfolio of products that we have available to help you protect and to uh, beautify your space. So you certainly have come to the right place. Tonight is all about frequently asked questions. Uh, what we do is we go through the feeds of all of our social media um, channels, if you like, and we collate questions that are reoccurring. Also, we look at any questions that have been sent to us um, by private message, etc., and pop them all into one place. So I do have quite a few questions, but do not let that stop you from asking any questions. As I said, that's what we're here for, to um, assist you in any way that we can. So I'm going to start. So the first question that I have is, we are painting the exterior of our house and we would like to know what we should do with the downpipes. Um, do we paint it the same color as the guttering or the same color as the render? You know, that's a really good question and I guess, from um, having been doing these sessions for a couple of years now, that's not a question that we've actually um, touched on prior. So really good question. If you are painting your um, downpipes, I would recommend that you paint them the same color as the um, existing render or the render. So you're gonna repaint the render, repaint the downpipes that same color. You don't really want to make a feature of your downpipes. I think it's really important just to have them blending in and disappearing. Um, same again, if you're touching um, on, if you're painting or touching up downpipes, etc., and you've got brickwork, what I would recommend you do is um, either find a color that's very close to the brickwork so that it disappears, or here you could actually paint it the same color as um, as your guttering and as your fascia, so it sort of looks like an extension and, and sort of blends that way. So there's a couple of ways you can go, but if you're painting your render painting your downpipes, match it in the same so it disappears. Okay, and the next question, and this is also a really good question and something that I think I've previously touched on, but it's really good to revisit it again. When painting eaves, do you do them the same color as the house or not? So, depends. I'm going to um, sort of tackle it two ways. So for me, for our home, We've used um, Colourbond Surf Mist because, as you know, I'm in Queensland. We have a beautiful house, um, you know, and, and using a white uh, per se on our house sort of suits where we live in our lifestyle, etc. And so I have, or we have used Surf Mist on our eaves and it sort of all sort of melds into one. However, if we had painted our house in a dark colour, I wouldn't recommend doing your eaves or your suffetes um, in a dark colour. You do not want, they don't, as it stands now, because of the way that they sit, it's not like they get any natural or any sunlight sort of um, hitting the surface, if you like. So keep it light. So I certainly wouldn't go painting it dark. Um, it would be looking for a lovely light contrasting color. I think that, that is the way to go. Okay. Wonderful. I do have a... Um, question that has just come in so on I'm just reading it here so thank you very much for joining us and your question is what color bond color roof would you recommend for red orange uh, brick house with black window trims please I'm trying to tone down the orange bricks 
Okay, so you've got black windows as well. Well, automatically, depending on where you are um, and depending on the look that you're sort of wanting to um, create, if you like, if you've got black windows, you could um, do your roof in black. It's going to tie nicely in with the windows and it's, it's not going to be adding another color as such. The other way you could go, and depending like with the red orange bricks, are there any sort of other flecks of color in there? Do you have anything that sort of, um, I guess I'm, I'm, I'm thinking and working through this at the moment. Is there something that, uh, are there flecks, perhaps a lighter fleck in it as well? And the mortar, is your mortar just sort of a natural concrete color? Because you could also go for a light colored roof. You could do something like surf mist, um, or you could even look at something like evening haze. Uh, you can see that there and that's a beautiful tone it has a very there's almost a slight little bit of green to it and obviously talking about red orange when you're talking about a red and you look at the opposite of the color wheel you're going to be looking to a green um, and they, they're designed working on the opposites of the color wheel to complement each other and to work together so something that has a slight green undertone is going to work really well so i would suggest either using a black to marry in with the windows um, also looking to use a lighter color you could use something like surf mist or even something like um, color bond evening haze i think either um, of those choices are going to work really really well okay i hope that helps you thank you um, what else do i have here okay uh, we're going to paint our house over the easter holiday uh, we have recently renovated and have ceiling paint left over from our previous house. Uh, can we use this for an undercoat and what paint should we use for our walls? Um, and then the last thing was we also want a white that looks white but isn't white and we prefer warmer white as we have limestone brickwork to work with. Okay, so there's quite a lot there. Okay, let's go first things first. It's really important that when you are um, renovating that you um, do adequate preparation to ensure a really fantastic professional finish if you like. So given that you have renovated and I'm imagining that you've got some bare gyprock there that needs painting um, and you're wanting to undercoat, I would recommend using something like Torman's 3-in-1. Now the reason that we have, so you, there are specific products designed for um, particular projects that you're working on. So doing a renovation and having bare gyp rock that needs to be undercoated, three in one is a primer sealer undercoat in one. But what I really love about this product is when you are painting bare gyp rock, um, gyp rock contains tiny little pinholes and the beauty of using something like three in one, it has exceptional filling properties. So it's going to fill prime undercoat, create a beautiful surface for you to then top coat, ensuring that you have a fantastic finish. So that's what I would recommend doing. Um, keeping your ceiling paint for the ceiling, I think is the way to go and certainly looking to use an undercoat. And then the next question was, what should we use for our walls? Okay, we have some fantastic products. Um, I, if you've been watching any of these sessions before, I really do love our Torbman's um, Endure. It's an amazing product. Uh, many features and benefits. It has mold inhibitors, very low VOC, so minimal smell. Um, and it has nanoguard technology. And what that means is that you can scrub the paint and it's not going to burnish. You're not going to end up with shiny patches. So it's a really good product. I would send you that way. Um, and we also want a white that looks white but isn't white. And we prefer a warmer white to, um, as we have limestone brickwork to work with. Okay, so for your interior with your limestone brickwork and you're wanting a white, I would recommend, let me just see, so you want something that's going to have that soft limestone, has um, a soft warmth to it, almost, I'm going to presume it's probably got a little bit of that goldy yellowy undertone. So looking for something like that would work really well. So I'm just here looking and talking at the same time, looking at some of my colors. So I'll send you towards, let's have a look here and I can certainly pop it up onto the screen. Depending on how much. Okay, so limestone, slight 
warmth to it. There's a beautiful colour here called, um, and I will hold it up to the screen. It's that one there, it's called Aria Ivory. And I think um, I have recommended this before when you start looking at limestones and travertines, etc. And I know that it sits really, really well with the more of the yellow sort of limestone or that sort of gold looking limestone. So that's a color that I would recommend, Aria Ivory. And it will, it's quite a light tone, but it, and it's going to look nice and white. But what you could do is also, um, if you're wanting it to really um, look white, but you're wanting to show the depth or the undertone, look to use a white trim. So you could use something like Torben's Brilliant White up against it, and it's really going to allow the tone in that white to pop. Okay, so I think that answers that one. So if you're looking to um, shop for colour, we do have a fantastic website and what I'll do is I will take you to that very quickly and then I will show you um, some of the products that I mentioned and also show you the colour on a larger screen. So I'm going to swap screens here and pop myself up in the corner, fantastic. Here you go, look at our fantastic um, Easy as with Easy Coat, and that's certainly a product that you can use as well. I love this product. It has all of your mold inhibitors in it as well. Beautiful, fantastic um, product. So let's have a look at, I'll remove that. You can certainly subscribe and get a lot of information and tips as well. Okie dokie, so here we are. This is the landing page or the homepage when you go to um, www.talbans.com.au. And here you can start to um, browse paint colors. Um, there's a lot of information. You can look at products, um, prep. We could do that. I'll take you to our prep paints. And there's the product that I was talking about a moment ago, Torbman's 3-in-1. I would certainly recommend that for you with your brand new Gyprock. And then I also did, the beauty of this is if you are um, looking to start thinking about projects for Easter. This is a great place to visit. Um, what I do love about it on the side here, you can see here that all of the products are grouped by, um, by project. So, you know, you've got ceiling paints, doors and trims, um, exterior, interior prep, etc. So you can click on here as to what you would like to look for. So I'm going to take you to interior and here we go here, the color, the product, sorry, that I was talking about a moment ago, our Torbman's Endure. So great um, place to visit, a lot of really useful information um, and it will help you when you're about to embark on your painting or renovation project. So, but let's have a look at colors. So I'm going to select paint colors. And this is fantastic. All of our colors are grouped by family to make it a lot easier when you are looking for color or shopping for color. If you do continue on down, this is where I like to visit. It is our swatch shop. Now, if you click on this, and the reason I come here is if you are shopping for color and you know the name of your color, you can search colors here um, in the search function with ease. So it gives you a lot more flexibility when you're looking for colors. So if I just scroll down here, and I'm going to have a look for the color that I mentioned a moment ago. Okay, okay, what's happening here? Oh, yeah, it's a little bit slow tonight. There we go, and so I can tap on the color here. And there you go, that's perfect color that I would recommend. Um, bear in mind when you're looking at this color at home, everybody, it depends on the screen that you're viewing it from as to um, what sort of end color you're going to be viewing because everybody has different pixelations in their screen which will certainly um, create a different look to the colors that I am suggesting. The best way to view your color is to get yourself a sample pot. Um, you're really going to be able to see true color. And I certainly recommend, I'll come back to the screen now. I certainly recommend when you are testing your color, it is to get a large piece of cardboard and to, I like to see at least a meter by a meter square um, brushing out three coats of color onto that piece of cardboard. And then you can move the cardboard around the room different types at different times, sorry, of day. So you can view it in natural 
light, you can view it um, in artificial lighting, and you can certainly pay particular attention when we're looking at interior colors, where your um, ceiling meets, so where your ceiling meets the wall, I would be putting the um, swatch here, and that way you can really see how the color's going to look uh, under, as I just said, artificial lighting, natural light. And then also where you've got your floor and then you've got your wall, just down below here, you can pop your um, swatch there. And that allows you to see how the color is going to work at a lower level. And certainly allows you to have a look and see if you've got um, anything in the space that could potentially influence the color. So we're talking about things like if you've got a wooden, wooden flooring um, and you're getting a lot of natural light, you know, the, the flooring can tend to um, influence the color and make it look a little bit warmer. Um, and I use this analogy quite a lot. If you've got something like a red leather lounge that's sitting within that space as well, that can sometimes uh, make the walls look slightly pink. So these are all sorts of things to consider. And I guess the best um, piece of advice when you're sampling the color is it's going to allow you to really see how the color is going to work within your home. So within your own environment. And then it takes away any disappointment that you may have. Um, you know, you may think the color you know, if you're looking at a tiny little swatch, you may think it's perfect, but then when you're putting it into a larger spans, it can start to change. So I always recommend trialing a sample pot. And even when you're looking at exterior color, it's very important uh, because there's lots of other things um, in your exterior environment that can influence your color as well. And in particular, if we're looking at whites, uh, whites, um, I, I believe using a white that has enough substance so it's not going to be too glary is um, quite crucial. So there's all those sorts of things to consider. So a sample pot is the best, I think they're what, around about $6 or so. It's the best $6 that you will spend. Um, and it's really going to ensure that you are happy with your color. Okay, so another question I have here is, should we use a different paint for our bathroom? One with mold additives. So. Look, there are paints around. We do have a, um, a kitchen and bathroom paint, but I would like to make mention that with our Taubman's Enjoy, and also as you saw when I brought up the screen when we landed on the, the homepage for our website, our um, Easy Coat as well, both of them have mold inhibitors in them. So, you know, you could use both of them in a bathroom, that's for sure. Another question here, so do doors and trims have to be white? No, they don't. It's entirely up to you and I know that it wasn't that long ago, you know, that we started to see um, a resurgence in doors and trims uh, being painted in darker colors as opposed to wall color. So it's really a personal choice. I do believe that doors can look fantastic in a separate color altogether. Um, it's an opportunity if you're not wanting to commit to using a huge amount of color within a space, it certainly looks fantastic on a door to paint it in a different color. Um, if you do choose to do your doors um, white, what I would recommend using is something like um, a water-based enamel. And the reason I say that is, if you're going to go white, you want the doors to stay true to color and you'd like them to stay you know, nice and bright and white. So using a water-based enamel, it contains, it has, if you like, non-yellowing technology. So it's going to stay beautiful and white. And I think that's really, really important. So we do have a product called Taubman's um, Water-Based Enamel, which would be a fantastic choice, available in a low sheen, semi-gloss, and also a gloss, depending on the sheen level that you prefer. Okay, another question that we do have, it is what is the best white to accommodate north facing and south facing rooms? Uh, we wanna use the same color throughout the house. Okay, that's a really good question because we do find that some people um, prefer to change up their white. So if you've got a room that contains a lot or is being um, exposed to a lot of natural light, a lot of sunlight, um, using a cooler white works extremely well in that environment. And then as opposed to if you've got a room in your dwelling that lacks a lot of natural light, using a warmer toned white works really well because it tends to warm the space up. So for me, um, personally, there's one white that I would recommend. Um, that, look, there's a lot of whites, but there's one I guess you could say that I gravitate towards and that's Taubman's Crisp White. 
It's our number one white. It is a beautiful white and it works um, extremely well in all situations if you like. So being interior. So I'm just going to see whether I can find it here for you. And you can see that there. I know there's a lot of glare coming from the light, but that is the color there and it is beautiful and it works really, really well. I will be honest here. I have it throughout my entire um, home in all uh, rooms, rooms that um, don't get as much natural light as others and it works fantastic. So I can thoroughly recommend that color for you. So that's Tormund's Crisp White. Okay, so what else do I have? Okay, so we have a hallway that has a lot of imperfections. Can you please recommend the best product to use? Uh, we have dado board at the lower section and we have high ceilings for the rest, but it is very old. It's a Queenslander and it needs a lot of work. Okay, so you've got two different, if you like, substrates happening there. So for the lower section, your um, dado boards, Oh, look, you could use something like Torman's um, water-based enamel and it comes in varying bases. So you have the opportunity whether you want to go lighter or darker. So it's entirely up to you. And I do think that, you know, either way looks fantastic when we're talking about old Queenslanders and when we're talking about highlighting or coloring the dado board. So one thing that I would suggest though is that you test to see whether the existing paint on the dado board is water-based or oil-based. So... The best way to do this is to get yourself a, a uh, let's just say a black or a dark colored rag and some methylated spirits. So um, dampen the rag with the methylated spirits and wipe it onto the painted surface. If the paint comes off, it's water-based. If the paint shines up, you are dealing with an oil-based finish. And if it's an oil-based finish, you're going to need to use something like Torman's 3-in-1 which is going to ensure adequate adhesion of the top coat. So if it is um, a water-based finish, I just suggest giving it a sand, a light sand, just to degloss the surface. Make sure that you wipe off any residue, etc., and that you've got a clean, um, stable, sound surface, and then you can apply something like Tobin's water-based enamel. For the uh, plasterboard above that has a lot of imperfections, obviously preparation is key. However, if you and I'm, I'm presuming, I'm just imagining this, it's a long hallway. I would recommend you using something like um, Tobman's Endure, but using a matte finish. So a matte finish because it's going to have less sheen. It's going to help to hide imperfections. So that's the way I would go. So I hope that helps you there. Okay, and we do also, okay, sorry, I do have another question here. So how does crisp white compare to cotton ball and cotton sheets? Let's see if I can get the colors up for you here and then I can show you, hopefully I can show you a bit of a visual. Where are we here? Okay, there's not a huge, what do I, what do I have here? Crisp white, cotton sheets and, sorry, cotton ball. I don't know whether you'll be able to see it on the screen, but we will do our best to show you. Where are we? Here we go. Where do I? You know what? They're, ve they're all very similar. So cotton ball, and I'm probably, you know, when you're looking at whites, you know the best thing to do is to put it against a white backdrop. And the reason I say that is it allows you to see the undertone uh, within the color a lot easier. So I'm just going to grab myself a white backdrop here. So, okie dokie. So you've got cotton sheets, crisp white, and cotton ball. It's a very, um, very slight variance in them. I would say that cotton ball is slightly. Let me get this right. Looking at here, cotton ball is probably slightly brighter. Crisp white has uh, maybe just a little bit more depth and then cotton sheet seems to be just slightly warmer. I mean, it is so minute when I'm looking at this. Again, I'll bring them up to the screen. I would certainly suggest when we're talking about looking at how these colors um, 
compare, getting yourself a sample pot of each because you're really gonna see the difference that way. I don't know whether you can see, yeah, it's very, very um, slight. And I, I think that obviously because we've got so many lights on here, you're probably not gonna be able to see it that well. But what I'll do is I can pop some links into the chat as soon as I um, hop offline of each color, which will allow you to sort of visualize it that way as well. I hope that helps, thank you. Okay, probably time for my last question here. So what green can you recommend for a bedroom? We are looking for a deep green to work with navy carpet. and We are open to going dark. Fantastic, so automatically I'm thinking of a beautiful green that may have a slight blue sort of undertone to it. So it's probably got a little bit more blue as opposed to um, yellow, if you like. So let me just see if you're wanting that beautiful richness. There's a colour here called marine green, marine green, which I think could look sensational. I'm just going to see. There's also another colour that I'm thinking of. Where are we? I'll just see whether I can find it here on the, on the fan deck, on the blade here, and then I can pop that up on the screen as well. It's a colour called Night Watch. Can't find everything when you want it when you when you're live it always goes that way let me just see 73 okay so depending yeah that's beautiful so there's a color right down below here um, called night watch which I think if you're wanting to go really dark and dramatic that would look sensational you could also if you're wanting something that is not quite um, is deep but is still going to pack a punch if you like and look stunning have a look at a color called marine green you can sort of see that beautiful tone there I do believe that that would work extremely well with your navy carpet so there's a couple of suggestions there so I hope that helps but I would say, I don't think there's any other questions that have come through here. No, it looks like a very quiet evening this evening, which is very understandable considering the football's on. Um, so I'm going to conclude our session and I'm gonna say thank you very much everybody for joining our session this evening. I do appreciate um, your questions and do appreciate being able to help you with all of your color queries. Um, we will be behind the scenes for the next half an hour or so to answer any further questions that you may have. So please pop questions into the feed um, and we'll continue to answer them but as we always say thank you very much for joining us um, stay safe everybody have a fantastic week we look forward to seeing you here again same time next week and until then happy painting see you later